The Legend of the Giant Causeway. This story takes place long ago, when fairies, leprechauns, and the giant roamed the green hills of Ireland. It tells of the strongest giant on the isle. Finn McCool Finn lived on top of Knockmany Hill with his beloved wife, Una. At the time of this tale, Finn and his relatives were building a log bridge from Ireland to Scotland. They were almost finished when suddenly the ground began to shake. Waves washed over the stones. Finn McCool when what was happening, I actually be getting home, he stammered. Una must miss me so. Then he ran off. Una was surprised to see Finn come flying up Knockmany Hill. You are home early, my love, she said. The giant Cucullin is coming from Scotland. I felt his footstep. Ash shakes the ground. Finn cried. Sukarling was the strongest giant in Scotland. Everyone was scared of him. He was angry and mean. During a storm, he once smashed a thundered thundered bolt into a flat, glowing pancake. He carried it around to prove his strength. Sukarling had beaten up every giant in England, Scotland, and Ireland, all except Finn McCool. Cucullin hadn't beaten up Finn for a very good reason. Finn always ran away. Now that a bridge stretched between Ireland and Scotland through Finn and、um, nowhere to hide, though it's enough. Enough is enough. Una sighed. Let's deal with、uh, that mean Cucullin once and for all. How long until he gets here? Finn put his thumb in his mouth. Thumbs are weird, trying to get their strength. He'll be here tomorrow morning. Finn whimpered. We have plenty of time to get ready, she said. We can beat Cucullin so long as you do exactly what I say. Una asked Finn to fetch her a pot of cream, three white stones, and a barrel of, barrel of a flour. Then she borrowed a firing frying pan from every neighbor around. Una cooked the cream into crumb curds of cheese. She formed them into a big soft bowl and set it in a basket with the three white stones. She mixed twenty-one loaves loaves of bread into seven of them. She baked in an iron firing pan. Then, before bed. Una made up a large baby crib and sewed a bonnet from the tablecloth. I won't sleep in a crib, dressed like a baby. Finn shouted. Would you rather fight a cuckolin? Una asked. No, Mother Finn. He wrapped on the on the bonnet and snuggled into the crib. Early next morning, the house on Knockmany Hill shuddered and shook. Even the wind that trembled, Cucullin was coming. Where's that fool, Finn McCool? Shouted Cucullin, burst through the door with a knocking. While he's out working on the causeway, Una said sweetly, "I haven't seen him for weeks." Well, his relatives. Said、so、he'd fled here. Sounds like he's afraid of me. Cucullin laughed. He had waved around the glittering disc. It was the thunderbolt. He'd smashed. Una laughed too. This brought Cucullin up short. 
Maybe you would like some cheese instead," Una offered. She set a round white stone on cooking pan plate. Una handed Finn the soft cheese, which looked just like a stone. Finn babbling like an infant. 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 Squeezed the cheese into the moisture, poured out. Then he swallowed it in one bite. Kukalin could not be outdone by a baby. He picked up the stone and squeezed and squeezed, but the stone stayed dry. The bit down. Who? He screamed. He lost four more teeth. That the baby must have teeth of iron. Let me take a look, he said. Kukalin leaned over the cradle. And the ridge for Finn's mouth. Finn nearly fled out. Ona steadily looked, kept him calm. Tukalin pushed Finn's mouth open with a one thumb. Tukalin pushed Finn's mouth mouth open with a one thumb. Chomp, ba. My thumb, he's broken my thumb. Hukalin screamed. There's no way I'll find the feather of that baby. Hukalin fled across the bridge to Scotland. And then he returned and smashed the bridge to pieces. To think McCool couldn't follow him. You can still see its remains on the coast today.